Coming up on Valley News Live at 10, a woman says her priceless jewelry was taken from her while at a local hospital. Will one side of the Red River have more mosquitoes this summer? Plus, where two planes collided in midair. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 10. Breaking news just into our newsroom. Police are looking for two potentially armed and dangerous men in Bemidji after shots were fired following a crash, a car crash just after 6 p.m. It happened in the 600 block of 23rd Avenue Northwest. Witnesses say that they saw a white vehicle crash into a power pole, breaking it. They say two men, one wearing all red clothing, the other wearing all black, ran away carrying a gun. They may have gotten into a silver Nissan with black rims and tinted windows. Now, officers found bullet holes in buildings and a vehicle, but no one was hurt. You're asked to call law enforcement if you have any information. A lot has been said and decided on regarding this year's battle with mosquitoes. That includes what kinds of spray to use and the approaches. As we wait for the first big hatch, Valley News Team's Aaron Walling spoke with a mosquito expert to find out what works best. Mosquitoes, a pest, a nuisance, and the seasonal thorn in our sides. Their presence annually marks the use of aerial sprays and foggers. And for nearly 20 years, Cass and Clay Counties and the cities of Fargo, West Fargo, and Moorhead have used the same sprays. But this year will be different. Really the same active ingredient and the same product that, that's being used. Cass County Vector Control Director Ben Prather says they're going with the same spray they've used in the past for most. But for Moorhead, the spray will have less potent. You know, primarily uh, different formulations of different trade names and things of that nature are, are uh, commonly interchanged. The common chemical in both sprays, according to Prather, is also used to control bugs on many of the fruits and vegetables we eat. If you're not eating organic, if you're eating conventional fruits and vegetables, all of those fruits and vegetables are essentially being soaked in this product. Spraying in the Fargo-Moorhead area has seen its fair share of controversy. Last year, monarch butterflies suffered after Cass County Vector Control spray to combat the West Nile virus. And no matter where you live and what's being used, the big question is what will work best. According to Prather, Moorhead's decision to use the less potent spray will come with a trade-off, which could to lead more mosquitoes on one side of the river than the other. In Fargo, Air Walling, Valley News Live. Prather also says that there is a chance that spraying might not be needed as much this season, depending on how dry it is. A CDC advisory committee says the Pfizer vaccine should be given to adolescents. Today, they unanimously voted to recommend the two-dose vaccine to be used in children ages 12 to 15. The CDC director must now sign off on the recommendations, but some states, including North Dakota, have already started putting shots into arms. If you're looking for other places to get the vaccine for yourself or your children, use our VNL vaccine tracker. It's on the homepage of our website, or you can open your phone camera and point it at the QR code on your screen screen and then tap the link that pops up. Tonight a woman is pleading for the return of her jewelry that went missing last month while she was in a hospital being treated for a broken leg. Valley News Team's Nishay Taylor has more on how the jewelry's worth can't be measured in dollars. I am heartbroken. Karen Inger of Hatton says she is heartbroken after several pieces of sentimental jewelry went missing. Last month, Karen fell and broke her leg. She was transported to Sanford Medical Center for emergency surgery. But as she was being wheeled in, she was told her jewelry had to be taken off. I handed them to the young man that was taking me back and he said, I, I told him to please give them to my husband when he came in. But Karen says that never happened. The next day, she was transported to Sanford South University Hospital. She was told her belongings were couriered and placed in a hospital room closet for safekeeping. Everybody checked. Everybody in the hospital checked and we could not find that jewelry. One ring, which was an heirloom, holds a special place in Karen's heart. My mother gave that to me right before she died. She died in 2015, and it's supposed to be passed down in my family. Karen says she put in a complaint with Sanford Hospital. Just a few weeks ago, she was told the case had been closed because the hospital had done their part in trying to find the jewelry. She believes someone may have stolen or may try to pawn them. Now, Karen is pleading for the return of her jewelry. Please, 
if you know where this jewelry is, please return it. No questions asked. Just give it back. Erin is also hoping everyone else will learn a lesson from her situation. She we'll says give your possessions to a family member instead of a hospital employee. In Hatton, Nishay Taylor, Valley News Live. In a statement from Sanford, they could not comment on any one case, but they did say that they make every effort to ensure that our patients' belongings are safe and secure. If you need help uncovering an issue in your community, call a whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is calling for unity and action on police reform. With a legislative session running out of time, neither side is budging on proposals on the table. Governor Walz said they're asking the House and the Senate for police reform to make sure that authorities don't find themselves gathered for a news conference or a funeral for young black men. The governor said legislation alone won't fix it all, but will allow things to move forward. But what we need more than anything is we need action. We need action to secure our communities. We need action where people are feel valued. We need action where black parents don't have to worry about their kids going to sports practice and what may happen to them. We need action to update laws that, as I talk to police on Metro Transit, saying they don't want to be put in situations where they're in physical confrontations over $2 fines. The Democratic-controlled House has already advanced a public safety bill, but the Republican-controlled Senate recently canceled police reform hearings. The Minnesota trial of three other officers accused in the George Floyd case will be postponed from this August until sometime next year. The trial of ex-officers J. Alexander King, Thomas Lang, and Tuteo is being delayed so a federal trial on civil rights charges can take place first. The federal charges carry stiffer sentences. Life sentences are possible. The federal case is not the only one where Derek Chauvin could face more serious prison time. Today, the judge in the state case ruled that aggravating factors existed during Floyd's murder. That would allow him to impose up to a 40-year sentence for Chauvin. President Biden signed an executive order today aimed at better protecting the U.S. from cyber attacks. Even so, the White House acknowledged more will need to be done to block hacks like the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack. Officials describe the order as an initial step toward hardening the systems and software which underpin the nation's basic functions. The order would require new standards on software. A wild scene in Colorado today with a mid-air collision between two planes in the sky. It happened over Cherry Creek State Park. There were no injuries reported, which authorities say is amazing. One of the planes deployed a parachute and crashed into a field. The other aircraft landed safely at an airport nearby. One of the planes was carrying two people, the other had just a pilot on board. Early reports indicate it happened as the planes were landing. The staff at Gigi's Playhouse in Fargo are working to move forward after fire ravaged their building. Right now, all their programs supporting individuals with Down syndrome are on pause. Normally, they would be starting summer programs to keep people with Down syndrome engaged even when they're out of school. But now they're forced to regroup and make a new game plan. After everything that's happened this last year, and now having this, um, it's just, it's really, really tough. And you, you do feel like you, you let your families down, even though we have some of the most supporting families out there. Um, it's, it's hard. The Playhouse is committed to rebuilding and they'll need your help to make that possible. They completely rely on donations to function and you can help them get back up and running. Just find this story on the VNL News app. A fifth grade class in Fargo is showing their support for Gigi's Playhouse today. An Oak Grove class wore their Gigi's shirts in support of Burke, a student at the school who uses services provided by the Playhouse. You'll see him pictured right in the middle of the photo. The class surprised Burke with the gesture and supported the or sported the shirts rather while watching a Red Hawks game. With the warmer weather comes questions about when pools will open for the summer. Today we checked with local park districts to see what's being planned. Fargo will open its pools on June 7th with normal hours and concessions. They'll open at 75% capacity but are aiming for 100% as soon as possible. Masks are encouraged but not required. And we have information on West Fargo, Moorhead and Dilworth pools on our VNL News app or the website at valleynewslive.com. 
Longtime journalist and father of U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar, Jim Klobuchar, has died at the age of 93. Klobuchar wrote for the Star Tribune, where he was a columnist for decades. U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar said in a statement, Throughout his life, my dad was a champion of those on the outside. She said her father went from the hard scrabble mining town of Ely, Minnesota, to interviewing people like Ginger Rogers and Ronald Reagan, to name a few. A public celebration of his life will be announced later. Later on Valley News Live at 10, fiery questions aimed at finding out what decisions were made and when on January 6th. But first, Hutch has the latest on the above average weather we've been having. We'll be right back.